The UK is being bombarded with scam emails, texts and calls. Good morning, this is O2. If you want your money back, then you have to listen to me. We believe that this is a case of identity theft. Every year, we're losing billions. The authorities can't keep up, so we are fighting back. We're back with ethical hacker Jim Browning. He works undercover, using his tech skills to hack into scam call centers so he can hear and see everything they do. I see these scammers trying to steal money from the most vulnerable people. I can't sit and just watch that. From our hub in Glasgow, we're ready to disrupt this global network of criminal activity. In here, we're monitoring even more scammers. And if it looks like anyone's about to lose any money, we'll intercept. Put the phone down immediately. Plus, we meet the victims left picking up the pieces. Nearly enough cripple me. That really frightened me. We'll also be tracking down those behind the scam call centres and holding them to account. Because this is a crime, isn't it? This is a crime, what you're doing. Just shut up. You are ruining lives. This is Scam Interceptors. Coming up, the scammers trying to coax a vulnerable victim into posting them money. I want you today to go down to your branch and withdraw. £2,700 for yourself, OK? I look into the criminals defrauding renters on social media. So the first listing that came up on the search was a two-bedroom flat, just £441 per month. And we know now that is definitely a scam. And we meet a man who found his home advertised for rent online without his permission. How can I and other people that have been affected by this scam, how can we stop it? What you're about to see is an uncomfortable watch. Scammers attempting to convince a vulnerable man to withdraw thousands of pounds from his bank and hand it over to them. It's one of the most shocking cases we've ever seen. It's mid-morning in the Glasgow Scam Hub, and we've picked up on another suspicious call from a fraudster. Uh, I, I myself can go ahead and complete the 90% of the work. The scammer is claiming to be calling from Visa and is speaking to a man somewhere in the UK. The premium account was meant to be from the London head office of Nationwide, OK? Exactly where, we don't yet know. We do not want yeah. you to come down to the London and complete the paperwork. We will take care of that, OK? OK, thank you. The scammer is based in Jaipur, in India. He appears to be suggesting there have been unauthorised transactions on the man's nationwide account, which might be the work of a fraudster. He's suggesting the man move his money into a new account to keep it safe. So today itself, your newer premium account will be activated and I can complete the transferring the rest of the procedure, like your standing order, your direct debits, your direct credit, everything, OK? We're just going through the, the scam calls at the moment and we've just heard one now that has been on now for 30 minutes plus. It's not a type of scam that, that either of us have actually heard at this stage before, but it does sound quite dangerous now, doesn't it? Because we're hearing about him suggesting a new, a new bank account, a new safe account, and we know from experience that is the danger zone because it's where they're trying to move someone's money into something else, which of course isn't safe, it's just a scammer's account. And his money's way more at risk now. It's a scam we've seen before. But this one comes with a dark new twist. I want you today to go down to your branch and withdraw £2,700 for yourself, OK? This is a scam we're calling the Visa Security Scam. It's likely the scammers told this man that they suspect an employee at his local branch is defrauding customers. They've asked him for help catching the rogue employee, offering him a premium account as an incentive. But in order to secure this new account, they want him to withdraw £2,700 from his bank in person and post it to an address which they'll give him. They'll have told him they can then use the withdrawal to help them trace who the fraudster at the bank is. It's interesting to me that they're, in, they're basically giving him an incentive, a financial incentive almost, to go and take his money out. So they're saying, here's a thing that's worth money, a premium account, and you can only have it if you actually do this deposit first, essentially. And take a massive amount of money out yeah. like that. Yeah. We're not talking 100 quid. You know, they're no. saying, him go and take £2,700. 
an amount that like, we can only assume they've based on what they know about how much is in his bank yeah. account. But what we need <laughs> is to try and get another number. We need another way of contacting this man because he's currently on the landline number talking to the scammers. We need another number and then we can hopefully intercept and tell him that he's actually talking to a fraudster. We don't know the man's name or where he lives. All we can hope is by listening to the call, we might find some all important contact details so we can reach him before he heads down to the bank to withdraw his money. Basically, you want me to go and draw £2,700. That is right. £700 pound for yourself yeah. and come back home. So now listen to me, sir. One thing I want you to keep that in your mind and be very confident over there. Right now, you do yeah. not need to disclose about this investigation and about your premium account, okay? Because yeah. just suppose in case the, the cashier, the teller who are going to hand it over the money, they might be involved in that mess. But if in case, why you are withdrawing your money? So I'm going to tell them I'm using it for deposit on a car. Oh, they were even giving him lies to say. Role-playing the things to get him past the, 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 the person and employee in the bank. This man has been on the phone to the scammer for almost 45 minutes and he's sounding very confused. Look, I'm sorry if I appear to be a bit thick, but I am 84 and uh, I've had no trouble with the banks before in my life. With the scammer blocking the landline, we urgently need to find another way to contact him. Just keep an eye on it, Nick, in case it goes dead. If it does, that'll be my window yeah. to get in. So, by the way, yeah. sir, do you have any mobile phone number? Oh, quickly, thanks. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure... <laughs> I'm not sure which one's mine and which one's my wife's. It's, um... 07... I'm going to give you two, right? 07... OK. Is that the whole number? Two digits short. You want some more, don't you? Yeah, come on, two more, buddy. Two uh, more. He's two digits short, and this man is struggling to remember the rest of his mobile phone number. The scammer is still blocking the landline, so there's no way of us making direct contact with him. Oh, oh I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, Tell me the next number, please. What is the next number? I take a number for you and give my daughter a ring? Let's kind of sort this out. So you do not need to disclose this matter to your daughter as well because we are running an investigation. Telling him not to even tell his own daughter. Unsurprisingly, the scammer doesn't want the man's daughter coming anywhere near this scam. Yeah. You can hear the stress this guy's yeah. feeling now, can't you? The heaviness of his it's really breathing has really gone up. Yeah. 07. Hey, what? Five, six. Finally, we get the last two digits of the mobile phone number. Nick sends a scam warning text in the hope he'll see it and hang up his landline. All right, you are doing it to activating your account. That, that noise in the background, it sounded like a mobile. And when can I expect you to be back from the bank? Yeah, but how can I verify this call? I'm just a bit worried now. Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt you like that, but don't you think if I'm not the right person, what would be the reason for that to informing you about the fraud charges. If I'm the wrong person, I would have liked to keep it that way, but I am the one who informing you about it. If our warning message did get through, it's not stopped the scam, but the man's questions seem to have upped the urgency of the scammer. I will be monitoring everything and completing the rest of the documentation. How long you think it will take you? No, I've got to get somebody to come and sit with my wife. And I've got to get somebody to take me to the bank. You can definitely manage to do that. I'll try to call you and check up on you between 10.30 to 11 a.m. We want Just double check this landline, Nick. Mm -hmm. 01. Yep. Yep. Correct. OK, I'm standing by. The scammers are arranging to call the man back in a few hours. The second he puts the phone down, we can try the man's landline. In the meantime, we keep the warning messages coming. Let's send a text saying, scam warning, put the phone down, like we did before. You are doing it to activating your account. So I've got a message now. Here we go. Let me see from my side, hold on. I've got a scam warning on my phone. At last, the man has checked his texts and seen our warning messages. 
I need to act fast. There's no time to lose. I'm going to ring my daughter. I, I think, I, I, think you'll, I want her to take this over for me. OK. I will talk to her first, OK? But the scammer is refusing to get off the man's landline, so I call his mobile. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, my name's Rav Wilding. I'm calling from the BBC. We are filming about overseas call centres that are trying to defraud people in the UK. You are not speaking to your bank. The piece, people you are speaking to are trying to steal money from you. Yeah, OK, mate. They were saying that there was a problem with your bank. They were trying to get you to draw out a massive amount of money from your bank. It was not going to any secure account. It was going to them. Oh, I see, yeah. So, by us speaking to you and you putting the phone down now, you, we've just saved you £2,700. You, you heard that, did you? Yes. We heard oh, what they were right. trying to do. That's why we, yeah. knew, we were trying to get hold of you, but you were talking to them on the landline. And it wasn't until you read out the two mobile phone numbers that we were able to contact you this way. Oh, thanks very much. No, my pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure, sir. Sir, can I... Uh, what about... Yeah, what go on. About somebody said that the two payments are already gone. No, he's lying. He's lying. He's trying to make you think there's a problem with your account. A, cl a classic ruse they use is saying that there's a fraudulent member of staff and they're stealing money and you need to do this secretive operation. I'm afraid it's all a pack of lies. Oh, thank you very much. Indeed. Don't you worry, sir. Don't you worry. What I would suggest is if you get on your phone keypad and dial the numbers 159. It makes a nice diagonal line across your phone keypad. It will take you straight through to your bank's fraud department. And just say you need to speak to Nationwide and they will just make sure that nothing has gone from your bank account. Tell your daughter what's happened as well. Please do tell her what's happened. OK, mate, if you write this, this is our office number and we're based at the BBC in Glasgow. Get her to phone us on this number and we can explain. Myself and my team will explain exactly what's happened and what they tried to do to you and just to put her mind at rest. All right, mate, you take care. Bye-bye. Thanks very much. My yeah. pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh my goodness, that, that well was close, mm. wasn't it? Well done, team. Team effort. He was asked by these scammers to go and draw out £2,700, a massive, massive amount of money to, to anyone. And we, we heard how close he was to doing just that, mm. didn't we? And he was very, very thankful for the call. But that was close. That, that was one of the closest ones I think we've had for, for quite some time. Later. With the scammers still breathing down the man's neck, we try to notify his family. Guys, I know we're on it, but uh, we've got literally a maximum of 20 minutes before they're going to call this guy back, and we need to speak to the daughter before then. In this series of scam interceptors, I've committed to looking into scams sent in by you. Today, it's the world of rental properties being advertised on Facebook Marketplace, and I've been sent a video message by Graham Clark from Plymouth. Hi, my name's Graham. I live in a small enclave of about a dozen houses, but pretty much in the country. And a few months ago, the, the neighbours noticed that the property was for, for rent on Facebook Marketplace. They knew that wasn't the case. They immediately told me they also reported it to Facebook. I reported it. Even the village postman put reported it. It didn't make any difference at all. We still have people turning up unannounced wanting to view the property. How can I and other people that have been affected by this scam, how can we stop it? It took about four months before my advert came down. What can we do to sort it? Wow, that's awful to hear what's happened to Graham. I mean, the invasion of his privacy, having people physically turning up at his house, thinking they're there to view it when he hasn't even advertised it for rent. This really is quite a nasty scam and sadly one that I've seen many, many times before, but we certainly need to do some work looking into this further. Well, looking at the images here, it is clearly Graham's property that has been put up for rent uh, without his knowledge. And even though that has now been taken down by Facebook Marketplace, it does beg the question, how often does this type of thing happen and how easy is it to spot? 
you don't have to spend long on social media to come across a suspicious listing. So I'm just on Facebook Marketplace now looking at properties to rent in Glasgow. That's where our hub is based. And straight away, there are some already that look very suspicious to me. Well, this one here has all the hallmarks suggesting it's not genuine. So it's advertised really cheap, £441 per month. Now I've done some research and the average for a two bedroom property like this in Glasgow is over £1,000 a month. Quite a big difference. And if you look at who's listed the property, there's also some clues there as well. The profile was set up very recently, only in 2021. There's actually very little information in the profile to say that it's actually a real person. The profile has no extra photos. There's no posts. There's no details of who this person actually is, and they've even only got two friends listed. They're also advertising a number of very cheap properties. But while these issues all ring alarm bells, they aren't quite definitive proof. But there is a way to check using a reverse image search on Google. Now that's when you place a photo or a link to a photo in the search bar instead of a text query. Then the search engine finds websites featuring that image. So let's give it a go with these suspicious listings. And by dragging and dropping that suspicious photo into the search engine, I quickly get results. So the first listing that came up on the search was a two bedroom flat in Glasgow for just 441 pounds per month. And we know now that is definitely a scam because when we did a reverse image search, we found those images from a holiday let and not even in Glasgow, it was from Greece. Got another one here. This is a flat that's listed for £610 a month in Glasgow. So very, very cheap. But looking here after the reverse image search, we can see it's actually a luxury apartment and it should cost more than £100 per night. We can also see here from this scammer's profile that this person has no photos, this person has no listed friends and actually only joined the platform this year. All of those things, huge red flags. Well, I'm genuinely really shocked with just how many of these fake adverts are online. And although it's taken me a, a few minutes to do those reverse image searches, it really could save you a massive amount of money and heartache in the long run if you were to do the same. These kind of fake rental scams are claimed to cost tenants £6.4 million a year, according to Action Fraud. And it isn't just happening on Facebook. Other social media platforms and marketplace sites are also being targeted. Alison Thompson is the National Managing Director of Lettings for a leading estate agent, and she has some key signs to look out for when checking if a listing is legit. So the warning signs that people should look out for, there are plenty, but I would say the top five, my recommendation would be, check the property listing. If the property listing's littered with errors and spelling mistakes, then the chances are this isn't a credible listing. If you are asked to pay anything upfront before even being able to view a property, then I would treat that with caution. I would also be very nervous if you are unable to view the property in person. I would also urge you to ensure that you have a lease agreement and if you haven't signed a contract or a lease agreement of some description then that also is a, a red flag as well. Alison says there are also additional checks you can do to make sure you don't find yourself caught out. The checks that you can put in place to ensure your property listing is legitimate. If you think you're dealing with an agency, Google the agency name and pick up the phone and deal with an individual hopefully at the end. Um, I would also ensure that you do not put a plea out on social media platforms asking for help looking for a rental property because you identify yourself as a target. Avoid paying any money at all online, particularly with 
um, services that look like you're going to be paying overseas and sometimes it's good you can have an online sort code checker to make sure that you're paying to a credible source and also if you're dealing with who you think you're dealing with a landlord then to check that they are legitimate you can also do a very cheap land registry search to check that that individual actually owns the property. Now if you come across these types of listings on Facebook Marketplace then it's essential that you report them. It's easy to do and could save someone else from falling victim to the scammers. Reporting a listing is actually really easy. There's three little dots on the right hand side. If you click that, the option to report is there. Click on that and you'll get a list of options and the one you want says scam. If you do this, you could really be saving someone hundreds if not thousands of pounds. We need some answers from Facebook about why these listings are ending up on these platforms and what they are doing to stop it. We spoke to Meta about what happened to Graham and it told us that it is sorry to hear people are being misled in this way. It said it doesn't allow fraudulent activity and that it works closely with law enforcement to support investigations and keep scammers off its platforms. It stressed that it invests heavily in security and has over 40,000 people working to keep people safe. It added that it has joined Stop Scams UK to help remove scams at the source. If you think you've been scammed, then there are some steps that you need to take straight away. Firstly, and most importantly, call your bank. The number is usually on the back of your bank card or dial 159. Then, remove any software that scammers asked you to install on your phone or laptop. If you're not sure how to do this, ask a trusted friend or family member. Change your password on as many online accounts as you can, and then keep a close eye on them over the coming days to see if there's any unusual activity. Tell your friends and family that if they receive any online approaches claiming to be you, that they could be fake. Report the crime to Action Fraud, the UK's reporting service for fraud and cybercrime. Go to actionfraud.police.uk or call 0300 123 2040. If you're in Scotland, report the crime to the police on 101. And if you've had a scam text, report it to 7726. That's spam as it's written on your phone keypad. The more that you report, the more that can be done to stop them. Earlier in the show, we intercepted a scammer attempting to con an elderly man out of his savings. I've got a scam warning on my phone. He endured a very long phone call and handed over a substantial amount of personal banking information before we were able to intercept. But given how confused he was, and with the scammers due to call him back shortly, we're worried they could still bamboozle him into withdrawing the cash. So we've been working hard, trying to trace down his daughter before the fraudsters call him back. Rob, I think we might have something here. Flynn here has found a number. Let's do it. Yep, we're on it. Good work. Yeah. Guys, I know we're on it, but uh, we've got literally a maximum of 20 minutes before they're going to call this guy back. Okay. And we need to speak to the daughter before then. It's, it's on a knife edge, isn't it, mm. at the moment? We've had no luck finding a phone number for the man's daughter. And as yet, she hasn't responded to our messages on social media. Has anyone done Twitter and yeah, on Instagram? It. We're on it. All we can do is hope that the man passes on the number I gave to him earlier and she calls us in the hub. And as we're searching, a call comes through on one of our lines. Hello? 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 Oh, hello. Hello there. Hi. This is Rav. This is all a bit weird, I'm sure. Um, Basically, we wanted to speak to you about your dad. Just to let you know, um, there was a scam attempt on him. And the reason we know that is because we're filming a TV show about scammers. It's all about scammers, and we're monitoring the illegal activities of these overseas call centres. Now, as part of our monitoring today, this morning, we noticed a call that was being made, and we were able to see that they were speaking to someone there who ended up being your dad. 
And yeah. as part of that conversation, we noticed the scammers were trying to get your dad to go physically to his bank and draw out £2,700. Now, thankfully, there was a tiny window of opportunity which I uh, and the team used to jump in and phone your dad and tell him it was a scam and it was nothing more than a scam and his money was safe. The good news is the man's daughter has already been on the case. Yeah, I went to the bank first. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not, a, I'm not much of a watcher of anything other than football. <laughs> it was nationwide. When I said he was intercepted by the, the uh, scam in, BBC scam interceptors, and that was obviously part of the scam, and she went, no, I think you're fine, that isn't it? Oh, they said that in the bank? <laughs> yes. Oh, brilliant. And when I said the name, she said, yes, he works on that programme. Should I've seen it? Yeah. Well, that's handy, because I thought that was all part of the scam. No, no, no. You've done absolutely the right thing. You've gone to the bank. Um, they've confirmed who I am. They've confirmed what we do. Um, I just wanted to make sure your dad's safe. These people may phone back. If they do, please put the phone down, do not engage, and then they'll get the message and go. The, the lady at the bank said that she's seen the programme and sometimes you turn up on the front doorstep. I said, that would have just finished them off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do, but we're actually based in Glasgow at the moment, and oh. it's a bit of a long trek. Nice talking to you. Give my love to the family. Thanks for that, and thanks for what you're doing, and, um, yeah, thanks for interrupting him. No, no problem. Yeah, it's made it, it made, I think it's going to make it a nicer experience than it was in the first place, if you do what I mean, apart from anything else. Fantastic. That's what we're here for. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, well, that's, that's made me feel an awful lot better. She'd gone to the bank, she said, look, he's had this scam call, he's then had this guy called Rav Wilding saying he works for scam interceptors, and the bank staff said, oh, we know that show, yeah, he does do that. <laughs> and then instantly she's like, right, so this yeah. is OK. So then she's come back laughing and said, Dad, it's all fine, and that's why she's phoned us. OK, that's very good news. So it's really good. That was a real, a real intercept there. Well done. Yeah. yeah. Good work, team. Well done. Still to come. We meet the organisation doing everything it can to help fight fraud against older members of the public. I think since the beginning of the lockdown, it's just gone off the scale. Back in the Scam Hub, a woman loses control of her online banking. You don't have any other bank. And in your Halifax no. bank, how much accounts you have? You have one account with your Halifax or you have two accounts? And we do everything we can to help her regain it. They were not who they claimed to be. I Staggeringly, in England and Wales, an older person becomes a victim of fraud every 40 seconds. That's over 800,000 people every year. Age UK are doing everything in their power to fight back against the scammers. I'm meeting Paul Webley. He's one of the scam advisors. So how bad are you seeing the problem with scams at the moment? Um, I think since the beginning of the lockdown, it's just gone off the scale. So it's much, much a bigger problem than it probably was previously. There's a lot more um, people who are spending a lot more time at home. Okay. So basically, that makes you more vulnerable. Um, depending on whether or not you have access to the internet makes you more vulnerable, whether or not you're shopping online, banking online, you know, the whole world, the modern world, everything now is related to the internet, and that exposes a lot of older people to a lot more vulnerability. For a lot of the older generation, it's something they've never really engaged in, so they are very much, um, you know, uneducated in how to protect themselves properly. So that's where the scams project and um, the awareness and the prevention comes into play. How have you found the older people in terms of what they should be worried about or not? Is there an issue there? Time and time again, the majority of people who get scammed is because the other person, it's almost like what I describe as like a grooming process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's where they make the time to sort of to get to know the person. So they don't walk in your life and scam you for a thousand pounds on day one. You know, it can be everything from that helpful neighbor who starts to help you carry your shopping home and then it just right. escalates. And it's the same with the telephone calls, you know, they almost treat them like they're a friend. Trying or... to build up that trust. Exactly. They're very savvy on how to manipulate and take advantage. And, and Paul, one of the things that 
really upsets me is, is when people say they feel ashamed because they've yeah. been scammed, so they don't tell anyone. And that's something I, I'm sure you would agree, is yeah. you, you shouldn't feel that no, way. No, you shouldn't feel ashamed. Because, you know, you'd be surprised when we go and do our talks in public, so to groups of people, often we start it with who's being scammed and everybody just sits there. So what I do to break the ice is I tell them about how I was scammed. Okay. Two years ago, I got scammed, so even the information advice manager who's delivering scamming can still get scammed. And once you break the ice and talk about your experience of being scammed, you'd be very surprised that practically everybody in the room, either they've been scammed or somebody right? they know there's been scammed or, you know, um, an attempt they, was made on yeah, them, perhaps? Yeah. So was that, did you see that then? So that the change in the room, Absolutely, the amount of people of course, that then admitted once it? one person talks, the whole room talks. Wow. Yeah. Paul, you clearly do some really important work, so thank you so much for yeah. sharing that with me Great today. to meet you. Stay you. safe. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. A brush with a scammer can leave you feeling rattled and disorientated, as the person we're about to hear from will testify. Despite doing all they could to limit the damage caused, their close shave had already left its mark. Wait a minute, I'll have a look. Hey, your email. Check the email of yours. Oh my God, this is too annoying, you see. In our Glasgow Scam Hub, we're monitoring an Indian scam call centre based in the city of Kolkata. And thanks to Jim, our ethical hacker, we can hear sound feeds from multiple scam calls they're running. Now what do you see, ma'am? And we can see the call log listing the phone numbers of the people the scammers are targeting. Guys, that, that number there has been in a call for 40 minutes. Yeah. Nick's realised that the woman we've just heard is deep into the scam. Wait a she thinks she's talking to online shopping service Amazon. It's a scam that targets thousands of people in the UK every day. Wait a minute. It says here, enter your... because of the code. The scam's first aim is to take over your Amazon shopping account. The scammers say it suffered a security breach and trick you into changing your account password to one that they can see and therefore use to get into your account. It says here, enter your, because of the code, your code was sent. Now, check the notifications and there is a code. What they've just done, they'll have said to her, of course we'll prove to you we're Amazon. We're gonna send you a code right now. What they've actually done is sent her the one-time passcode, which you'd use if you were trying to recover your account because you've forgotten your password. I write it down the code on a paper. If she reads this code to them now, they will be able to access her whole they've account. They've not only got the code from her, but they've got yeah. access to her entire exactly. Amazon account. That's bad. Yeah. Write it down on a paper first. Write it down the number. I've done that. We better listen in to this then. No. Yeah. Continue. Yeah, I've done that and it says, Create a password, confirm password. Now create a new password, write it down on a paper, so next time you will remember. The reality is, if she's given them that six digit code, they've already been in her Amazon account, they've already taken down all her details, and they've probably already added some expensive item to her basket, so that when she gets into her account now, having reset the password, there's something there she doesn't recognize. It's perfect. It's, it's perfect, exactly. The scammer will put expensive items into the woman's shopping basket, items she's not ordered. This makes her believe that her account has been accessed by a fraudster and that the scammer really is from Amazon and trying to help her. Yes, and it says password. Now put it on your password. Our sound feed from this scam is less than perfect, but it soon becomes clear that the scammer is closing in on the main purpose of the scam. With the woman believing her Amazon account is compromised, the scammers are now suggesting her bank account has been as well. They ask her to go to her online banking to check, but, in fact, they want to access her bank account to try and steal her money. And a part of this Halifax bank, do you have any another bank? No, I don't. You don't have any another bank? And in your no. Halifax bank, how much accounts you have? You have Halifax. one account with your Halifax or you have two accounts? Halifax. Halifax, yeah. I have. From what we can hear, 
the scammer has persuaded the woman to open up her online banking on her mobile phone. I've got two, I've got a savings account and I've got um, a current account. Okay, love, now come to the home screen and open up your calculator. Yeah, open up your calculator, okay? The scammer has just said something that, on first hearing, seems rather strange. Did you open up your calculator? Yes, I have. She's asking the woman to open up her phone's on-screen calculator. It's calendar. She can see her screen. Yes, I have. She's already in. She's in. But instead, the woman opened her phone's calendar. No, no, you need to open up your calculator. Calculator, not calendar. Close it. Oh, sorry, sorry. The scammer saw this. She's already got access. Which means she must have already persuaded the woman to install a program on her phone that allows them to see into and control the woman's mobile. It's known as remote access software. Now put the balance which you have in your savings account. The woman types her savings account balance into the calculator. And because the scammer can see the screen, she now knows exactly how much money she can steal. Yeah, yeah we try. need to get her on the okay, phone. Can someone it? read out that number? Let's just try it. And Nick, can you listen in to see what they say when I'm when I'm phoning? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's zero seven three. Let's just try and call Sorry, this person can't answer at the moment. Oh, yeah, please leave the we can't get through on the phone because the woman's talking to the scammer. Nick tries sending a text. What are you going to say? Scam warning, put yeah, down the phone? Scam warning, hang up and contact your bank immediately, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Just to try and pull her out. Yeah. Just to see that word scam. And you have two accounts in your Halifax, or you have more than two accounts? Just two. She wants to know the total amount of money to she's got across worth. two accounts. Yeah, exactly. OK, I've sent her the text. I've sent three back to back to so maximise the chance of her seeing that notification. OK, now come to the home, please. Sounds like neither of them have seen it. Doesn't, does it? At the moment, the scammer's got the winning hand. She's gained the woman's trust. She can see into her online bank account. And there's nothing, so far, that we can do to stop her. I've done that. Oh, what was that? But now, we hear a noise. I think that was the scammer hanging up. Has the scammer hung up? Thanks to our surveillance, we can still hear her talking in the Kolkata Scam Centre. One of our team, Harleen, understands Hindi and listens in. Is the savings in the or is the current in the Not enough money, maybe. Right. This scammer is seeking large amounts. She's hung up to go and find another target. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. So it's just not worth their time. That just makes me so angry. Yeah. That after all that, we heard what they were trying to do this, to this lady. And then, Harleen, you just heard them hang up the phone and, and you were able to translate. And they said it was because she didn't have enough money. Yeah. I'm just sickening. Let's try and get her back on the phone now, now that the call's ended. Um, can someone just read out that? The scam may have stopped, but we still need to talk to the woman. She's revealed so much information to the scammer that both her bank account and her Amazon online shopping account have been compromised. Hello. Hello, madam. Sorry to bother you. My name's Rav Wilding, and I believe the person you were just talking to was trying to scam you out of some money. Oh, we see. They were not who they claimed to be. Oh, we see. So what do I do? So, did they ask you to put any software on your phone or your computer? Yes, they did, yes. Yeah. What that is, is actually a programme which lets them see what you can see on your screen, and I believe that's what they were using. I would strongly suggest that you remove that from your... Was it your phone or your computer? My phone, but yeah. I don't know how to remove it. Don't, don't worry. Phone. Do you know if your phone is an Android phone or a iPhone? It's a Android. It's an Android. So what we're going to do, we're going to see if we can help you just to remove this. It's vital that the woman removes the scammer's software. Until she does, the scammer could still see into her phone. It takes me a few minutes. 
So at the top right, you should see um, the profile icon. But the phone is now safe. I've uninstalled it now. Oh, you've managed to do it. That's brilliant. You've got rid of it. However, I would still urge you to call your bank, and I can give you a really easy way to do that if you phone 159. Yes. All the bigger banks uh, use this system. If you phone 159, just tell them you've had a call from someone claiming to be from Amazon and you just want to make sure no money has been sent over or is at risk, all right? I think it's really okay. important you phone them. I just want to make sure you're safe. Yeah. But is there anything you can do to stop them doing this, though? That's what we're doing. We are doing this TV programme where we are set up in a special uh, centre where we are monitoring the calls, we are stopping these left, right and centre as many as we possibly can because we don't want one penny of money from people like you going into the pockets of these scammers. OK then, thank you ever so much for you. You have a lovely day, look after yourself. Thank you, bye. Bye bye. Oh dearie me. The problem is that these phones, you know, they're, they're, they're getting so advanced now and it's so easy to stick apps on and it's not necessarily that easy for to everyone remove. to know how to remove no. them um, because a lot of people never had to do it before. No, it was one of those situations where we end up providing scam interceptors tech support at the same time as intercepting scams, you know? It is, isn't it? It happens more and more, I'm afraid. We just don't want it to be at any further risk. No. She's certainly happy with our help, but I think all in all, team, that's a, it's a, a successful job. Very good result. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And I'm even happier when, 30 minutes later, the woman, we now know her name is Beverly, phones me back. Hello, Scam Interceptors, this is Rav speaking. Hello, Rav, it's only Bev again. Hello, Bev, how are you getting on? I'm now all right. Now, would it be best if I changed, if I asked them to change all my online banking, right? Yes. And send me a new, um, a new card? Would that be best? Beverly, if they were to change your card and send you uh, and different account numbers, and if you were to change your passwords, yeah. that is the safest thing you could possibly do. OK, then. All right. So Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah, oh, that was Beverly. She sounded a bit more upbeat then. She did. Um, she's spoken to her bank. She's actually going to just change the card, change um, her, her password. She is in, then in the safest place, isn't of she? Of course. But I'm glad that we've, we've got Beverly's trust and she's on board and, and she's been helped. She's been helped. Quite right. Yeah. We haven't been able to identify all the call centres, scammers or their criminal colleagues that we've intercepted. But we're continuing to investigate and, where we can, we'll be taking matters further. If you'd like to contact us about any of the issues in today's programme, then please drop us an email. Scam interceptors at bbc.co.uk. That's all we have time for today. Remember, if you're ever unsure about anyone that calls you, asking you to transfer money or hand over your bank details, simply say no and hang up the phone. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay safe. <laughs>